time walking around and just picking up on points with people. And even if he's got somebody who's fighting for a championship, he won't focus specifically on them, they'll treat everybody very much the same. You know, um, and he, he'll spend time where he needs to spend the time to help the fight progress. And then once the clinch works out where everybody usually gets a shower and goes to sleep, by then it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. So you'll, you'll crash out, you'll get some sleep, you'll have a few hours, you'll get up about 2 o'clock, yeah, have some food, and at 3 o'clock you start to do the same thing all over again. And it's continuous. Um, if the teacher needs to spend some time with people, it's usually after the class, you, after the class, the afternoon session is finished, usually about 6 30, 7 o'clock, you, you take it to one side and maybe go through something, or tell you to go off and just do a specific thing. So it might be a million kicks or something crazy like that. I remember a particular uh, training technique that Pimu did with me from a, from a tee, from a front kick. And you probably know this well anyway. And that was just a face. You just facing the wall with the camp. I'm just doing this, facing you just standing and doing this. And he made me do 500 of those like this. Make sure the guard stayed all curved spine. I just stood there doing 500 of these. Put my foot down, he said, now 400, then 3, then 2, then 100, and then 9, then 8, then 7, then 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, then 500. How will I like it? I'll tell you what, my front kicks are fantastic. <laughs> it's a great technique. I mean, really simple, you know what I mean? Um, I've got friends who do different martial arts and they'll talk about specific ways of working the front kick and all these fancy things. What's the tactic you're just going to make? Just do the front kick. That's how to get better doing your front kick. Just do the front kick. Then, of course, you've got to put it in the context with the ring and how you use the ring. And this is what we're talking about yesterday about time and about stealing the step. You know, it's one of the, it sounds like a simple thing, but it's probably one of the, the, the most valuable strategies you can take away from this weekend. Just being able to steal somebody's step significantly improves your chances of beating the opponent. Because I can guarantee. You do this with anybody outside of this club and they wonder what the hell you're doing. Because they, they won't have seen it. I can, I can, I can put my house on it. Because I've, I've, I've never come across anybody other than Tony Myers, who's been influenced and who actually uses this technique in his training. Yeah, I mean, Kamu teaches it, of course. A lot of camps in town teach it to Matt, they don't even tell you about it. It's like, well, yeah, that's what you do. You know. So, the things we did yesterday, like stealing the step, well, well obviously gonna, I want you to keep thinking about them. I want you to remember them. I want you to be aware of them. When you do hard work, think about what your partner's doing. Just, even if you just make a mental note of it, you just notice it. Great, okay, the weight's forward there. I'll put my weight forward, see if he notices it. Yeah, so we'll work on the past of day. Do that. But if you see your partner doing that, and you're getting the weight forward just when you need it, you deliberately set this up, yeah, just hit the leg and see their reaction. Just throw a ball kick in and see if they block it in time. If they don't, fantastic. We now start to learn about how to use footwork. It's not just walking, it's the footwork pattern. It's about actually utilizing the change of weight, you know. And like when we do a clinch today, remember, you know, because we're looking at elbows in the clinch, don't forget this knee's going to be coming in as well. If you feel your opponent's weight shift and they're weak, boom. So again, you're building up this unconscious ability to control your opponent. And it almost seems like, yeah, you're fucking magic. It's like some magical happening. It's like, you're kicking me, boom. You always can get that. And I'll do everything I can to break my rhythm, to change it, and I'm not going to get Because he's just you know, starting a little bit. 540 fights. <laughs> you know. We go over there, 30 fights or not. I'll be like, 30 fights, yay. 30, no, the 14 year old fighter over there is out of the You know, these 14 year old kids have had 30, 40 fights. I mean, and the proper fights, you know, how long is it needs to the head? None of this A, B, and C class pussy stuff we have in this country, you know, we tell the dice, C class, what's happening? We all know how long it needs to the head. Oh, not only time, you have got a year. Now, I believe actually you should train with elbows and knees to the head all the time. Because the way you train is the way you react. You know, if, if you're a good teacher, 
and I can teach you about defending against cell walls to the head and knees to the head. I mean, how you can leave somebody in the head boots me anywhere. I would never allow my head down there, except on very special occasions. <laughs> but an absolute member of the opposite sex. My head stays further up here, it's locked in. You know? And, and that's the way you should train, essentially. You know, that's what I'm saying, part of it, you know, the way we train is the way we react. We, you just practice, don't ever let that head get pulled down. You know, when you're training, whatever it is you're doing, make sure you lock the shoulders up. I mean, we're going to go through, we're going to go through it all today. So, um, we'll start with shadow boxing, just to get lightly warmed up, okay? I want shadow boxing with the hands and the elbows, so I can just walk around and have a look at elbows. I want to use cutting down elbows. Let's just make it quickly aware of the different elbows. I'm sure you know them. Let's just go through them. Okay, we've got cutting down elbows this way. You've got side elbows straight across. You've got cutting upward diagonal elbows. You've got uppercut elbows this way. Okay, you've got overall elbows like so. Okay, you've got spinning elbows. You've got jumping elbows sideways, jumping downward elbow this way. We've got another an elbow, a rabbit elbow, which is used a lot in the clinch. Where you get the hands on the centre of the body here, and you would just rotate in to cut the face. So you'd be in like this position here, you just cut away, and that's to expose already cut eyebrows. Yeah, just dig them in. They also dig upwards as well. Quite nasty little things, really. They're just they're not meant to knock you out, they're just meant to you know, cut the face and, and continue to bruise it and pull more away at it. Okay? So off you go, man. just. Okay, just shadow boxing, hands and elbows. Okay, we're just going to face off your partner, okay? We're just going to work elbows really light and relax. Just side elbows. Okay, so Ross knows right side elbow thing, yeah? Now, if you, if you notice something, I knew this would happen, that's why I'm doing it. Okay, when you're doing elbows, you must be at the correct range to hit the opponent. So what Ross has got to do, okay, it's nothing against Ross here, everybody does it whenever I'm doing demonstrations. They always say, I'll say, hit me with the right elbow, and they'll literally go there. All right, well, why are you going to hit me? Okay. So, Ross hit me with an elbow. That's, hit me with an elbow. That's better. See how he's going moving in closer. So we've got to get used to work at a very, very close range in order for elbows to work. Yeah? So this is what we're going to do. We're just going to move around each other. We'll stay at this sort of range to start with. I'm going to start with the right elbow. Okay? I'm going to move in. I'm going to move right in over Ross. So the point of my elbow would actually hit his eyebrow if this hand wasn't here. Hand open at the back. That's it. There will be high. Like this. Okay? So hit me with an elbow. See the position of my hand. And my forearm here. It's important that it's high like this, obviously. I'm not bothered about this at all. I don't care about this being hit. It doesn't score points, it will cut, it will bleed, but it doesn't really matter. It won't knock me out. Okay? This, all of this area here is what I want to protect. I get any cuts around here, he's going to be scoring points. And he's going to hurt me as well. Okay? Possibly even fracture my jaw, my cheekbone in my jaw. Okay? So, as he moves in, I slip my hand high. I can still see Ross here, okay, through this gap here. The hand's going to be in a fairly high, sunny position. This, Protect obviously. I've seen you when you've been warming up, you all more or less all of you are doing this, so it's good. Just make sure that hand's there like this. Because obviously from here, we have to use this to grab, we have to use this to pull down and, and cut as well. So don't don't discount the fact that in this bottom position, I can, can if this is a strong solute position, okay, this is open here, this is exposed, so that's it there. Okay? That's fairly strong now. If I was just to hit him, it, it isn't gonna work. Okay, but I can pull and then I'm moving into clinch range straight away. Okay, so give yourself some options. As the elbow comes in, move in and just practice pulling this arm down and see if you can expose this. Alright, this is a strength but it's also a weakness. If you're not aware that that can be pulled down, anybody good in clinch will just catch that and pull it down. It actually doesn't take much strength. What I tend to do is when I lock, I lock I'm cutting down here, I'm locking this arm. It's locked on here. See how it's locked up to this arm. So as the elbow comes in, pull a lot. If you try and pull my hand down, yeah, it's locked up. Okay? So don't just place it there. It's quite common. I've seen lots of people doing it. They just go like that. It's like, you know, like that. It's just resting, locking on. Yeah. Okay? So it's a good, strong shape. It's a triangle horse. Yeah? It's really strong, locking it. Yeah. 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 Ye
All right, guys? Okay, off you go. What happens is, characteristically, people put their hand in here, put the yeah. back in the neck, and this will, this is no good, is it? Get it high on your head. Okay? Mm -hmm. Like this, look, now this is better, now this is strong. Yeah. So I can hit this quite hard. Yeah? So you can, yeah? yeah? Okay? I can hit this quite hard. You've got to do, though, as the elbow comes in, hit me hard. You say that I'm driving forward as well. If you look at what I'm doing here, the elbow comes in, whoosh, I'm there. I'm moving in towards my opponent. There's a good chance that this will strike him as well, of course, isn't it? Which is what I wanted to do. If you do this really slowly, I have to do this nice and slowly so I don't hit you. So the elbow comes in, I'll drive that, let's do this slow. Yeah, there, into his eye. And that's the sort of range I want to be working at with elbows. Ideally, when I'm working with elbows, carefully just, that's where I want to be. I want to be here with elbows. Yes, you do get elbows where you go, oh, and then just dive in and cut. But to be honest, if, if the boxer's that switched off, you shouldn't be fighting at that class. If you can outclass him by using a jab and an elbow, and you're hitting, it's, it's usually luck. All the fighters just not up to your level. You know? Uh, I mean, if you can hit somebody with an elbow this sort of distance, you know, that's a good point. It's going to be hard now for him to beat me. If I'm sparring with him, and I get like, boom, and I cut his face then and move back, the judges are going to go, ooh, ooh, big star next to him. You know? Characteristically, elbows are usually done at this sort of range when you're moving into the clinch or you're defending against things like hooks. You know, if a hook comes at me, hook around right here, so you can see. If a hook, right here, yeah, yeah. There, you see? That's a good time to use a hook. In the heel now, smashing into his face. I teach this in self protection actually. It's a great technique for self protection. Gates are close to big while swing at you in the ball, and you just go smack or bang. It's what I was saying yesterday about move forward, move forward, move forward on the attack. You know, it, it's a, a good training tip when you, you do fighters classes, everything's forward, everything's forward. You know, everything's very aggressive. Moving in against the bad man, moving in against any attack. And that straight attacks, you know, it doesn't matter. Just move in on it. So, let's go back to what we're doing, yeah? So, elbow comes in, lift this nice and high, strong. I can still see the opponent. This hand's strong, so he can't pull it down. But I bet your pant will tell you that's quite weak. Yeah? I mean, think of it, I mean, I'm not an expert at Hubbard, right? You know, the, this stuff. <laughs> um, but think of it, it's like a form of Hubbard, you know? I mean, you can play with this very safely. I mean, if you've got head guards and you feel a little bit reticent to do this, a little bit nervous to do this without head guards and put a head guard on, but I think it's great practice to do without a head guard. <laughs> it, it just puts an edge to it, you know? Because you know you're going to get it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, just all we need to do, okay? We'll start with that right now, we'll come in. Come back and then start playing. You try and catch me first, yeah? Right. Yeah? See what I'm doing? I'm just going to feed it in, that's it. Get that up now. All you had to do then, this hand was down here. I was coming over, that's it, and that would hit me under the chin. Yeah? yeah. Okay. I might pop it off here. Okay? I mean, very like that sort of feel. Don't tense up. Keep it as relaxed as possible and just play with it. And remember, you're all fancy, you're not going to try and knock each other out. It's not going to be a competition to see who can beat the shit out of the other man or woman. Yeah, it's, you're just playing to learn. Okay, we'll start it from there. It's a really nice elbow floor drill. I use it with all my fighters if they're not being exposed to elbow training. And it works. Okay? Thanks. All right, let's keep going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's really good. Um, you got bang once, didn't you? It wasn't that bad, though, was it? No. Anybody else get clumped? No? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Is it a bit of a shock, isn't it, when you get hit with an elbow? Yeah, get used to it. No, seriously, if you get used to it, if somebody punches in there, it's only one thing, is it? I'm used to it being hit with elbows, but it's. We do, should we just line them up every week and just, just hit, hit them? Just hit them with elbows. Yeah, okay. yeah, until they go like this, Pat. Harder pass, harder. <laughs> okay, um, what I'd like you to do now is just move it into the clinch work we were doing yesterday. I don't want to spend a lot of time with this, but what I want to do is just move around here in pairs. 
and just add a few little tips and techniques to what you already do. Okay, so you're going to move in.